Micro goals get your house in order. Sharon Horn, Elston here. Welcome to day 1,826 of What's She Up To Now, documenting the journey as I transitioned originally from brick and mortar corporate world of business over a quarter century in corporate America, 27 plus offline businesses and industries before I came online in, in 2017. I think 2017, following my divorce and you know, separating all the assets and things and all of our businesses that we had together, decided that I, I was old enough to retire and just do whatever I wanted, but I really didn't want to. I felt like I still had stuff to do in the world, right? I have this driving desire to make the world a better place in whatever way I uniquely can. And so I wanted to explore what could I do on the internet because I'd never really done it before. I would you know, dabbled with a little bit of social media, dabbled with some masterminds and some coaching and some training that I had gotten about the internet, but I really hadn't applied much of it because I was so busy running my day-to-day -day businesses and working in my businesses instead of on them. Yes, guilty of that, definitely guilty of that in the past. And uh, family, raising my family and things. And so I just had all kinds of excuses for why I hadn't jumped on board and gotten involved in it. And then in 2017, my excuses were gone and I was kind of excited to figure out what it was all about. Well, of course, like so many others, when I got online, I made a gazillion mistakes. Even with mentors and coaches, I still made a bunch of mistakes, right? Part of it was following the wrong mentors and coaches, following too many people, and then figuring out what is my purpose? What's my focus? What am I going to do? And then a lot of it was just shutting down and stopping following hardly anyone, but one or two people and things and focusing in on what it was I wanted to do. And that's when I got into challenges. And actually I've been in challenges all of my life, but I really honed into, that's my, my thing is challenges. And not just little challenges, did a lot of 30 day ones, 90 day ones. Annual challenges are where I love focusing in, and what I love doing and sharing with other people because you can do one thing every day and make it easy and make it a habit and drastically change your life in any area or aspect that you want to change just by doing a little thing every day. And so we talk about that. We talk about how do we handle changes and challenges and setbacks. And I've got a framework for that that I have honed in on since the pandemic because the pandemic was like, what are we going to do now? I don't know about you, but that's how I felt when it happened. And I'm like, how am I going to keep going and moving forward and luckily I was online, so it was really actually easy for me because I'd already been at home and working in my pajamas as pajama grandma for a few years by then. So it wasn't as drastic a change, but I knew that with everything shut down and locked down and all of our normal ways of being and living, I too had to find ways to keep myself going. And so that's that really made me appreciate that I'd been doing an annual challenge and uh, I it just reinforced for me the value of showing up every day even if you don't feel like it you get up you get dressed nowadays i put on makeup every day or i try legally blind so my makeup is pretty iffy on a lot of days <laughs> my daughter and my sisters will remind me of that so if i can help you anyway ask and i want to share the couple pieces of content that we did this year's annual challenge is the get your goals annual challenge i want to thank chad hannah for suggesting that topic for me i wasn't sure what i was going to do this year and so that made it really easy to pick is when somebody that you respect and admire suggests something, I do it, right? It's like, if my coach tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. If my mastermind says, hey, we see you doing this, stop doing that. I'm going to stop doing that. Uh, so today, our Get Your Goals Challenge, I'm covering at the beginning of the year, instead of jumping right in like I did last year with the BU 365 Day Challenge into an area of the life framework, we just started working on that right away and then I figured it out as I went along what did I want my structure and my strategy for last year's challenge to be this year I decided we're going to ease into it because most people let's be honest most people give up their new year's resolutions uh you know the first two weeks of the year right everybody's got these great resolutions they're going to change all these things they're going to lose 50 pounds they're going to you know make a million dollars whatever it is and usually by week two they've had a couple of setbacks or obstacles that have popped in and they've given them up so instead of hopping in and doing that right off the bat, I decided I would research and share a bunch of different goal frameworks, different ways people have of framing and looking at different processes and systems for setting, achieving, um, dealing with and thinking about goals. And so today was day 14 and it's micro goals. And to me, it's a lot like our to-do list or our daily challenge. We're going to do this thing every day to make sure we get what we want out of our life, to make sure we get our goals. Uh, so we're 
we're setting. And I said, let's set five little micro goals, right? And micro goals are little teeny things that you can set and do, which is why they feel like to-do lists to me. I have a strategy and a way of every time I make little square boxes on my to-do list. And as I get things done, I used to do circles in corporate America. I would check them off or I'd fill in the little boxes. So at the end of the day, I could go back and I could see if I had left anything I said I was going to do undone. And I did that because number one, I wanted to always do what I said I was going to do because I wanted people to be able to trust and count on me when it came to being a leader in my corporate uh, jobs, my corporate roles. And that's when I started doing that. And I just carried that into my personal life. But it gives me this great sense of accomplishment, even on days when I don't feel like I'm getting much done. I can go back and I can look at that notebook and I can see all the check marks of things I actually got done. So I never go to bed thinking, oh, if I'd only done more. Okay. And I used to do that a long time ago, but I don't do that anymore. Why? Number one, it's a waste of time and energy. We have to focus on what we have accomplished and where we're going and being grateful for that to create more of that in our life. So micro goals was our topic for the goals annual challenge today. And our idiom to kind of coincide with that was get your house in order. I looked up a bunch. I actually asked chat GPT to give me a hundred goal related idioms to start off the year. So I've got some to choose from. And I write them in a little notebook. I'll show you exactly how I do stuff. I wrote them all in a little notebook. And then every day I just go through and I pick one. And then I keep track of which ones I've used. I didn't write today's down yet. Oh, no, I did. The 23rd. Get your house in order. And I, I did share at the end of the, of the Super Size Your Business video that I really like this idiom. But I'm more apt to tell people, family, friends, coaching clients, etc., to get their shit together because sometimes people need to hear you are beating a dead horse. You need to get over this. You need to get your act together in order to move on. <clears throat> so I, I've probably been known to say, get your S together more than I've ever said, get your house in order. But I've definitely said, get your house in order too. So we talked about where did that come from? It comes from the Bible. What does it mean? And how can you apply it to your business and what, what things in your business you probably want to make sure that you have your house in order, that you have systems in place. Then I shared that in 2010, I had a sudden cardiac arrest. So I got to actually test out whether I had my business house in order or not. I definitely didn't have my personal house in order, but I did have my business house in order. So my business survived my, I, I survived it too, but almost didn't my sudden cardiac arrest. All right. That's all I've got today. I have had very little sleep. Uh, my granddaughter decided last night she didn't want to sleep very much. She didn't want to go to sleep. And then she wanted to get up at four o'clock when her dad traveled down for his lineman job. So I got to hang out with her, which is always fun. She's so amazing. Uh, she just has a lot more energy than I do necessarily at four o'clock in the morning some days. All right, that's it. If I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow just to let you know what's going on in my neck of the woods. Have a great day. If I can help anyway, ask, 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 ask. I say that. Every, not every day, but a lot of days I say that because you know what? Most people are too scared to ever ask. All right. Have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.